Have you ever found practicing really frustrating? I know I have, and I know that a ton of other guitar players out there will also have felt this. When we start out with playing guitar, we know there's a lot of things we need to practice to get to a great standard of playing. But sometimes the roadmap of how to practice can sometimes be a little bit clouded and a little bit confusing. It's very overwhelming at first when you see the huge range of information that is out there and all the things you need to practice to become a great player. Now, it's really hard sometimes to really know what to focus on in our own practice routines. And we are all individual as guitar players. Every single one of us on this journey is going to approach playing the guitar in a slightly different way. So there's not really a one rule fits all when it comes to practice plans. It's all about finding what works for you. So in this video, I'm going to give you eight of my favorite tips on how to get the most out of your practice sessions. Hopefully some of these tips will help you develop your own practice routines and your own ways of playing the guitar and taking yourself to that next level. This video is brought to you today in partnership with Music Radar. There's a written accompaniment to this video, so if you want to read more about all of the tips I talk about in this video, there's a link down below in the description. You can hit that, go over to the Music Radar website and read the accompanying lesson right up to this video. So all of these tips that I'm going to give you are things that I have used myself in my own practice routines, but through the years that I was teaching guitar, they're also tips that I passed on to students and seen great results from. So in this video, we're going to give you eight of those tips that you can take away and use yourself. So gear-wise, what you're hearing in this video is my custom T style guitar from LT Custom Guitars. This is plugged into the Hughes and Kettner Black Spirit 200, which I've got a little bit of a crunch sound on. And the Hughes and Kettner Black Spirit 200 is going via the Two Notes Torpedo Captor X straight into my audio interface. All right, the first step is practice in small bursts. Now, when we start playing guitar, we hear all these stories about players like Steve Vai who have 10 hour guitar practice routines. We don't need that in the early stages. In the early stages of playing guitar, little and often is way more beneficial for you than it is to practice for six hours one day and then not touch your guitar the next day. So I always recommend small but intense bursts. Now this really doesn't matter what you're practicing. This could be a singular chord change, it could be a scale, it could be a riff, it really doesn't matter. You can take this idea and carry it through your entire guitar journey with you. I still practice this way myself when I'm really trying to nail a part for a show or there's a lick I really need to get under my fingers. I will use short but intense bursts of practice to make that happen for me. So when I say short, I do mean short. I mean five minutes, 10 minutes with a maximum of about 15 minutes. What the short burst will do is it would make you focus on that element and it will really kind of just drive you to improve it. I find that doing short bursts either multiple times through the same day or once every day for a week will give me much better results than if I practice it for four hours one day and then I don't touch it for the rest of the week. So it's something that you can really build in. For instance, if you're changing a chord, you could spend five minutes on that one chord change first thing in the morning then try it again in the evening and then do that every day. So you're doing two short five minute bursts a day. By the end of the week, you should have that chord change nailed. Same could be applied to a difficult lick or a riff that you're learning as well. Tip number two kind of piggybacks off the end of tip number one. And this is focus on a single element that you struggle with. So let's say you're learning a lick that you just can't get your fingers to follow the pattern of. That's okay. We can focus on this one element. So let's build a practice idea around this one element. The lick might be four or five notes, but maybe the third note is the one that's causing you trouble. So what we're going to do is we're going to slow that down and we're going to focus. We're going to make sure we're playing every movement, every note slowly, steadily and clearly. And then we're going to ramp up the speed. You can use focused practicing with intense bursts of practicing to get some really great results, especially on some tricky little things like licks and riffs. Tip number three is don't practice things that you find too easy. There's a big difference between playing the guitar and practicing the guitar. Playing the guitar is the fun stuff. That's the stuff that we know we're good at, we know we can do, and we can just call out at any point. This could be a collection of riffs and licks that you've already learned on your journey, but practicing the guitar that's the time for us to go into the unknown. That's the time for us to sit down and learn the things that we don't already know or work on the things that we find hard. So when we're playing guitar, we're just having fun. We're doing whatever we want and whatever we enjoy. When we're practicing the guitar, we're focusing. We're working on something very specific. So if we fill our practice time with things that we find too easy, 
We don't need to practice those things because we've already got them nailed. So don't let your personal fun stuff interfere with your practice stuff. Keep the two very separate and you'll definitely find that your practice sessions will be more productive. Tip number four, practice with a metronome. A metronome is a device or an app, in this case on my smartphone, that we can use to practice with. It gives us a preset pulse, a timing. What we can do is we can build exercises and practice ideas around that metronome click. You could be working on scales at one or two notes per beat, or you could be working on chord changes. You could use that as almost a drum track, so let that run, play a riff, play a chord progression, and lock in with that metronome. Metronome is great for developing your sense of timing, rhythm, and awareness. Metronome's also a really essential tool for speed building. So let's say I'm taking this four note pattern here. That's five and seven on the D and G. If I take my metronome and set it at a comfortable tempo, I can play that one note on every click. And then when I'm comfortable, I can up the speed of the metronome. So let's say I'm gonna go up by about 10 BPM. You may hear this kind of increase. You can hear how that's marginally faster. We can also split that up and do two notes per click. That's gonna be even faster again. And we can use the metronome to gradually build up our speed. It's a great way for building finger coordination and dexterity in the hands. Pick a finger or picking exercise Start with a slow tempo and work up in 10 beat per minute increments until you find that point where you physically can't go any further. You'll know when that is because you will not be able to move your hands at that speed. Make a note of that tempo and then every day try and work back up to that tempo and after a few days you'll find that you break through that ceiling to the next level of speed. Tip number five, practice with a clean tone. An overdriven tone or a tone with tons of reverb, delay and effects can hide a multitude of sins and mistakes. If we practice with a clean tone, we're practicing with a really direct, unforgiving sound. This is especially useful if you're working on chords. Let's say I'm getting my A major chord really good, but there's something that's not quite sounding right. Maybe there's a note that's not ringing true. If I play that with a clean sound, I can hear that the note in question is my high E string, so I can make the necessary adjustments so that rings out. Same if I'm playing a scale, I can hear every single note and every kind of subtlety of the scale as I play with a clean tone. So I can really hear if there's anything going wrong inside of that scale or anything I need to adjust. Maybe there's a note that I'm not pressing down hard enough. While a clean tone can sometimes make it more tricky to practice, that's kind of what we want. We want that push and we want that unforgiving sound because that's gonna tell us all the things that we need to work on inside of whatever exercise or pattern it is that we're working on. Clean tone is a great way to hear every single detail of what you're practicing. And then when you then transport that into a distorted sound or a sound laced with effects, you're gonna get a much better sound because you're gonna be playing it clean at the source, and then the overdrive or the distortion or the effects are only gonna enhance that further. They're not gonna mask problems, they're gonna enhance what you're already doing really well. Tip number six, record yourself practicing. This is a really simple thing to do. All of our smartphones these days have voice recorders. We can record ourselves very easily in a practice session by just putting our phone down and hitting the record button. What this is gonna do is it's gonna give us a measure of where we are at a certain point in time. So to go back to some of the things we talked about earlier about building on speed, about building on accuracy, using intense bursts of practice, record yourself at the start of the week, working on whatever the idea is or the phrase or the lick that you're currently stuck on, then record yourself again halfway through the week, and then record yourself again at the end of the week. Then compare the three. Having that early reference is a really great incentive because what that means is if we can hear a difference by the end of the week, a good difference or a bad difference, we know that something's changed along the way, either for the better or not for the better, but that means we can work on it. But if it is for the better, that means we've improved. Because learning guitar is such a constant stream of new knowledge and new information and new skills, it's really hard sometimes to notice small improvements in our own playing. That's why recording yourself is really useful because we then have that reference to listen back and then we can say, oh yeah, I did improve. I have gotten better at that thing. If you're just playing it in the room, perhaps you won't notice the improvement yourself, 
Because along that week, you've heard every single small improvement to the thing that you're working on. That way, by the time you get to the end of the week, you're kind of used to what it sounds like again. So even though it has improved, you may not have heard the improvement as black and white. If you record yourself, you have that reference. This is great because it does allow us to see that we do improve with practice. Number seven is something that we can use with the metronome, and we can also use this with intense bursts of practice, and that is slow it down. Slow everything right down. Whenever you're learning something fast, it's really easy to try and dive in at the deep end and go straight in at full speed. While this is rewarding because it sounds the way it should sound, sometimes doing that can actually push you into some worse habits and affect you further down the line. One of the big problems with rushing with guitar speed is that you can develop sloppy habits. So you may be a sloppy picker. You may be able to play whatever the lick or phrase is up to speed, but it may not be that lean sounding, which is going to give you a lot of problems further down the line because your playing is not going to be very accurate. So the best way to remedy this is to take the tempo and drop it. Go as slow as you need to go to get every single movement of that phrase or lick absolutely perfect, then build it up gradually. A metronome is a great tool to help with this because you can measure the practice, you can measure the progress, and you can set yourself benchmarks about where you want to go with the speed. And tip number eight, and this is one of my personal favorite practice tips, is use backing tracks. Backing tracks allow us to contextually practice something. Now, contextual practice is something that a lot of guitar players do miss out on in the early stages. We think about practice as being running scales, changing chords, working on riffs. But contextual practice is sometimes something that is incredibly useful because what that does is it takes all that stuff and it puts it into context, especially if you're developing your skills as a lead guitar player. So let's say you've learned your first scale and you want to learn how to play guitar solos. Maybe you've learned your pentatonic scale, you've learned how to bend strings, you've learned how to do hammer-ons and pull-offs. Now you want to put all that together, but when you're just sitting there on your own noodling... <laughs> It can sometimes just sound a little bit endless and a bit aimless because we're not really going anywhere with that because we don't have a context. We're just playing notes for fun. What a backing track is going to allow us to do is it's going to give us a musical backing. So let's say we're going to go with a blues backing track. We're going to take our scale. We're going to play those notes, but this time we're going to fit it to the context of what the track is telling us. So this is a really great way to develop phrasing because we're listening to something and reacting to it with our playing. We're also working on our timing because the timing of the backing track isn't going to change. There's a drum beat there. There's a pulse there that we have to lock into. The track isn't going to bend to accommodate us. We have to fit it. So it's really useful for that. Develops your sense of hearing. If there's a lot of stuff going on in the track, you might not want to add a ton of notes. You might want to play something quite minimal. Or perhaps the track is really dynamic. Maybe there's a really quiet part. You want to rein in what you're doing and play softer, play gentler, choose your notes more carefully. Then when the track ramps up to a heavier section, you might want to dig in a bit more, add some more gain and react to what's going on. There's a ton of great backing tracks here on YouTube. One of my favorites is a channel called Elevated Jam Tracks. I use his jam tracks for most of my videos. So if you've ever seen me playing over a jam track, you're probably hearing me play over one of his. He's a good friend of mine and he does make great jam tracks. There's a link to his channel down below in the description. And also at the end of this video, I'm going to play over one of those tracks just to show you that stuff in context as well and how I use backing tracks to practice. It is just going to be jamming over a track. But for me, when I do that, I'm listening to the track. I'm reacting to the track. I'm trying to play tastefully and melodically to suit the mood of what the track is giving me. So there you go. There are eight tips for better guitar practice. I'd love to hear if there are any tips or tricks you guys are using in your own practice routines that you think I've missed from this video. Throw those down below in the comments as well and share them with everyone else who checks out this video. Let me know what you thought of the video down below and if any of these tips have helped you develop better practice habits. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button and join the channel. There's a bunch more content just like this. And don't forget to hit that like button as well. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. I look forward to hearing what you thought of the video and thought of the tips down below in the comments. And also don't forget to hit the link for the Music Radar website down below in the description as well. You can check out the write-up that accompanies this video over there too. Thanks so much for watching as always. I'll see you guys very soon.